Hi guys and welcome back to another fly fishing video. So this week you find me on the banks of the Per Marquette just outside Baldwin in the state of Michigan and we're here with a few friends to try and catch some steelhead. So without further ado, let's get, get into in. it. Oh yeah, that's a crack in it. Yeah. All good? There you go. So we've primarily come to try and catch some steelhead and basically they're rainbows that have gone out to Lake Michigan and they're now making their way back up the river per Marquette. Now it's been strange weather conditions, this is day three and the sun's out, it's shining but yesterday we had a snowstorm, temperatures were around minus five, it was uh, not particularly comfortable. So how are we tackling up to try and catch these fish? Mostly we're using seven and eight weight rods, a couple of the lads that fish for salmon have brought switch rods which are ideal for this closed in kind of river. So you can use a switch rod to great effect to swing flies down down the streams. Now I'm told that the steelhead live in the deeper holes and then they come up onto the gravel to make reds and, and obviously breed. Now we've not had a, a lot of joy, some of the lads have caught some fantastic fish over the last couple of days but unfortunately I'm yet to get a, a proper steelhead. I've had a small brown trout path and a small rainbow and, that, and that's been my lot so far but Conditions are only improving as the week's going on, so hopefully we'll be able to get in about some of these fish. I did look into getting new kit for coming on the trip, but when, after speaking to a few people that have fished for steelhead, I thought that the kit I had would probably do the job. So basically, uh, this is the only rod I've been using so far. I have brought three rods. I've brought two seven weights and I've brought a three weight because I thought I might target trout with a Euro nymphing approach but my seven weight is pretty much rigged up with a floating line uh, I've got a hardy demon reel on my Witchwood RS2 competition it's quite a stiff rod which you'll be able to deal with any of the larger steelhead if I'm lucky enough to encounter one of course now to this I've got a short length of leader probably around six feet and I've got a, a swinging weight on that down to a swivel and from the swivel I've got about three more feet of 12 pound tippet to a streamer pattern that you, you might not be able to see but I'll take a photograph and I'll stick it up in the corner there so you can have a good look at the, the flies that I'm using and then off the bend of the hook I've got a small egg fly. Now, the guys that have caught steelhead on this trip, every fish has taken the small egg, except for the big brown trout that Dell had the other night. He caught it on a streamer. And it, there seemed to be a little magic hour between five and six o'clock in the evening where the fish really came alive. So we've, we've tried to, with the information we've had, we've tried to do the best we can to work out how we can get more fish into the net. Saying 
thrown in your eyes It's hard to speak in a miracle And every word creates the veil But it seems we're all the same We all need love You say like half twelve foot Go back and get some scrum for here. Yeah. yeah. Send Lindsay back to the car and get the food yeah, for yeah. us. I think the youngest guy should run up them stairs and get the scrum. <laughs> Who's the youngest guy? I don't know. <laughs> well, there's a lift over there. You can go and use some. Oh, is there a lift? <laughs> That's a f set of steps, aren't they? No. Uh, apologies for the sound quality, I didn't really intend to uh, do any video and so I've only got a couple of GoPros with me and uh, we've, well the groups had a couple of steelhead, the rest of us have only managed small rainbows, the odd sprat here and there, we're now at a part further down than I've ever been before and uh, we've, we've covered quite a lot of mileage today and uh, we've got very little to show for it. Um, now, I know, you know, the fish get a vote, that's just the way it is, but you build these trips up in your head about how good it's going to be and, and obviously you've got a certain expectation and when that doesn't happen, it doesn't take long for the morale and the group to go downhill pretty quick, but we're persevering as best we can with the water we've got. There's a couple of occasions where we've come across signs that say private, no access, but as far as I'm aware, the state law allows you to wade up the margins and uh, where it's not safe, you are allowed on the bank to get past deeper holes. But we're, we're pa persevering. We've had, we've had snow, sunshine, wind, uh, real trouble with rod rings and uh, reels freezing up. It's, uh, it's, be it's certainly been an experience, if nothing else. Well, I thought I would stop today and just give you a little bit more information about coming to Michigan on a trip. Now, yesterday I was enjoying myself in uh, the sunshine, the fishing was, it wasn't great for me, I've got to say, I had four or five rainbows and a nice brown trout. I've come for steelhead and I'm on day four, I'm getting a little bit twitchy, I've not had one yet. Now, I had a hold of two today, but unfortunately the first one was bungled at the net and I lost it. The second one I had, I was on my own, I got the fish on the reel, but because as you can see it's very cold, my reel froze up and the fish just bolted and snapped my cast. So I'm a little bit disappointed that uh, I didn't manage to get either two of those fish to the net. Now the best method for me, and it might be a little unorthodox for any Americans that are watching this, but it, I feel very confident using this method and it's worked well and it's basically a beefed up Euro Nymph rig and what I've done is I've got some really strong uh, 16 pound tippet, I've gone from a fly line straight through and then I put a micro ring onto the end of that. I've used coloured wax to just mark up above the tippet ring and then I've added four feet of of 12 and a half pound real Fluoroflex Plus and then another four feet of 12 and a half pound real Fluoroflex Plus and I'm finding flies that are working are small eggs, very small, much smaller than you'd imagine considering the size of the fish we're targeting here. So size 16s have been very good. Now Dell and Fergie are off to a flyer, they've managed to get a few really good steelhead. Uh, Ian's struggling a little bit, he's got He's got a bad cold and he has got a bad back now. So uh, he, he's um, he's doing what he can with what he's got. Dell and Fergie are doing great and uh, thankfully they're getting some fish for your enjoyment. And uh, I'm a little envious if I'm honest. It's it's hard to, to try and do the videos and do the fishing at the same time. But I've got a number of days, there's still a few days left and I'm still hopeful that I'm going to get the trophy shot with the steel head. So I'm going to get back to the fishing and I'll let you know what's happening later on. So what's the difference between fishing in America and Great Britain? Well, I've got to be honest, the Americans have got it absolutely sorted. I think that's why 
fly fishing in the US is absolutely thriving, whereas in the UK, I do feel it is on the decline. And the, it's simple access. So I've come to Michigan, the state license was around $60, $50, I, I can't quite recall, but very reasonable, and that gives me the right to fish any waterways in the state of Michigan. Now, there are some limitations to that access. There's private land, but there's lots of public land as well where you can gain access. And if you have the use of a drift boat, you're able to drift through, and as long as you're in the river and not trespassing on private property, you can fish till your heart's content. Now, in the UK, you've got to buy your fishing license, which is, is perfectly acceptable, but then you have to pay a fishing fee to the landowner or the fishery owner, and it's starting to become a little bit prohibitive for the, the run of your mill guy, which I consider myself to be. Uh, fishing's getting quite expensive now, but you know, it's a passion. Once you've got the passion for fly fishing, it's very difficult not to keep doing it. And I try and, I try and justify my fishing trips by thinking about guys that go to the football to watch Premier League, for example. Um, it, it can't be much cheaper than a whole day's fishing. Go and see somebody like Chelsea or Arsenal. Uh, I don't follow football anymore, but uh, and I'm not sure what the prices are, but I dare say they're very expensive. So in America, you've got fantastic access. And the other thing you've got here is by the rivers, they've got lots of these little campsites and you can pull in in your RV or you can pull in in your car and set your tent up and it's very, very cheap. And then you can fish to your heart's content. There's a, a chap here, even in these weather conditions, a chap's come, he's set his tent up and he's, uh, he's down the river fishing now and I expect he's here for the entire weekend. Guys, if you're getting value from the videos or even some entertainment, please don't forget to leave the video a like and think about subscribing to the channel. It's absolutely free and you'll be informed whenever I release new content on YouTube. Let's jump straight back in. Well, I'm joined by Kevin here. How long have you lived and worked in Baldwin in the tackle shop? I've been in Baldwin now for five years and been fortunate enough to be in the fly shop for about three and a half years now. Yeah, you, it must be great fun uh, it shoot, is a lot shooting of fun. the ship with fly fishing every day. Yes, yes, yeah. makes work uh, rather easy. Yeah, Seen yeah, a lot I can left imagine. Light work. So you, you know the Per Marquette River quite well then, I take it? Yes, we are fortunate in that we sit directly on the iconic fly zone of the Per Marquette River. Yeah. Um, we were the first river in Michigan to have the German brown trout introduced in 1884. Brown trout were introduced and uh, we've had some lovely brown trout already on our trip and uh, they're very distinctive. They remind me a lot of the tweed brown trout, the markings and stuff. Okay. So, uh, you get brown trout. What other species do you have in the river? Uh, we have rainbow trout and brown trout are in uh, residence year round. Yeah. And then we get a prolific um, salmon run. We have a salmon spawn in the uh, fall, September, and into the beginning of October. Yeah, and, and that's the king salmon, isn't it? King salmon yeah, and, and uh, uh, cohos. We get small run of cohos, but mainly the uh, yeah. kings. And if you follow the channel, two years ago I came for the Kings and uh, had an extraordinary time. In fact, my friend had to come to the Orbis shop and buy a new rod because he broke his yes, he did. while he was uh, playing the King Salmon, the huge fish. Yes, uh, we always recommend starting with a 10 weight. Yeah, and I was using a 9 weight, but I think he broke a 10 weight actually, I in the, as I recall. It was a 10 weight. So we've come this time for the steelhead run. Correct. And do you think we've hit it right? Uh, steelhead run looks a little weak so far this year. Um, it's been real tough. We had such low water conditions and clear water conditions um, all winter long leading up to it that I think it slowed it up a little bit. Yeah. Um, so we may be a little bit early. It might be a little slower this year than usual. Typically the river is pretty full of steelhead uh, towards the end of March, end of the beginning of April. Yeah, so this would normally, normally be prime be time. right in the meat of it. But uh, certainly the first couple of days of us arriving, the river levels looked like it was summer conditions. Yes. Uh, low and clear, beautiful. And uh, here in Michigan, somebody said to me, if you don't like the weather, You've just got to wait five minutes, and uh, I've been trussed up it's daily. It was minus eight just two days ago. Uh, I had every bit of item of clothing I brought with me on, and I was still cold. Yep. But today, You're it's absolutely layers. boiling. It's yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. And uh, you think there's going to be big 
changes in temperature. Do you think that affects the fish at all? It definitely does, um, especially in Michigan when we get uh, the crazy weird spring storms that are a little bit of winter, but a little bit of spring with warm air and cold air mixing. Yeah. Um, the pressure change really does affect. Knocks them off, doesn't yes, it, I think. It does. Yeah. So the, the first couple of days, you wouldn't have thought there was a, a, a fish in the river. Uh, we really struggled. Uh, the boys did manage a couple, but yesterday when we were out, it was like there was a big drive coming through. It's, uh, there was so many fish. Yeah, uh, caught a pad out moving. Yeah, yep. difficult to tempt on the Boy, fly. Well, I'm joined by Wesley. He's a professional fly fishing guide, and do you exclusively guide on the Pier Marquette? Uh, for the most part, I guide here on the Pier Marquette. I also guide the Asable River up near Mayo, Michigan as well. Right. Um, so this time round when I've come, I've just been sort of walking the banks and uh, doing the long walks. We put some steps in, me and my friends. But there is another way of fishing this river and it's drift boat fishing. You can hire a guide who will supply the boat. And can you just explain a little bit more about that, Wesley? Yeah, so um, it's nice to be able to walk in and fish because you get a little bit more personal and one-on-one -on -one with the fish. Um, but sometimes it's really nice to be able to confirm what's really going on in the river once you float over top of everything. Um, it gives you an advantage in terms of your drift. You can move yourself away from the trees. Uh, you can also spend a little less time in spots that you shouldn't and a little bit more time in some of the you know, more key areas. Uh, it's about efficiency. Floating down the river and being able to see what you're doing and, and make some headway down the river. You don't spend too much time in any given spot. You kind of get just the right amount of time and uh, it's nice to get a slightly a bird's eye view down into the river. Yeah, and, and also from a previous experience, at lunchtime the guide will barbecue up a, a really good lunch for you. So you're getting a hot meal inside you. And yeah. although we're stood out here in sweatshirts today, the last few days it's been absolutely bitter cold and a hot meal's been great to have. Yes, yeah, We uh, when we do full day trips out here, uh, we tend to bring grills, we tend to bring jet boils, Brats and we like to bring something to, uh, you know, kind of make it more some. than just fishing. Uh, sometimes on a cold beans. day, hot yeah, bowl of soup or stew or chili rough. really kind of warms you up, and uh, it's a nice added bonus. Keeps yeah. you going the rest of the it, day. Exa exactly, so when you're feeling like, oh, I'm freezing, it just gives you a little pickup <laughs> yeah. to keep going. So how's the fishing been this week? Uh, the fishing's been good. The catching's been hit or miss, honestly. Yeah, yeah we've um, found similar sort of things. We've managed, actually, we've been lucky. We've managed fish every day. Good. Um, but I've come along here with some very experienced and excellent anglers. Good. You know, they know what they're, they're, they're about. Um, Ian and I, my, my friend, we, we've struggled slightly. We've managed to pick up a few fish, but Good. It's, uh, it has been difficult. And a lot of the locals that I've talked to and a lot with the drift boats are always very friendly and very courteous. They've struggled a little this week. Yes. Uh, and Kevin was saying in the shop that the run's a little late. It's a little late right now. Um, the water's been super, super low, and because of that, uh, the fish don't really have any drive or initiative to, to push them up the river. Yeah. Also, it's been really cold. Last week, our water temps were 52 degrees. That was yeah. prime. That was awesome. And the last few days, it's been 30s, you know, yeah, 37, yeah. 38. So uh, the fish have been hiding a little bit, but we're, we're good for one or two a day, at least good shots and opportunities, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah, excellent. And that's all you can ask as an angler. You can't just turn up and expect to catch fish. You, you come in some days, it just doesn't work out for you. Exactly. At the end of the day, if you can leave having a good day, knowing you put your best foot forward, that's that's all you can really ask for. Uh, any good day on the river is, you know, a great day, really. Absolutely. So. And uh, we've, we've obviously come a long way and, uh, these things have got to be planned in advance. We can't just phone up and say, how's right. the weather this week, you know? So we booked this thinking it was going to be prime week. We've just been a little bit unfortunate with the run, I think. Right. Um, but if you wanted advice, the internet's a great place where you'll get lots of information and there's several videos already about the pear market yes and how to approach it what's your sort of go-to method for tackling the steelhead rod length weights um i kind of two different ways i really like indicator fishing them so i really like using a bobber or an indicator yeah um running some sort of egg fly as smart as steelhead are they also really just kind of like chartreuse and orange in yeah, some yeah. form, whether that's a stone fly with a little orange or green or an egg fly. 
high. Um, and on the flip side, I really like using switch rods, an 11.7 and 11.8 weight uh, with like a sink tip throwing small streamers, leeches, things like that to elicit, you know, a more aggressive strike in the colder temperatures. Yeah, and I've, I've had some success with um, articulated streamers this week. Good. In fact, that's how I've caught my fish. Nice. Um, but my friends, uh, they've been using Euro-nymphing techniques mm -hmm. with very, very small egg patterns, yep. and that scored well for them. Good, yeah, that works very well. When, when the water gets clear and the water gets cold, uh, you do have to downsize a little bit. You know, right now, we've been running about eight pound test all week right uh, whereas yeah. last week we could run 10 and 12 pound tests so always downsize a little bit and you know kind of change your game and tailor it to the conditions if you can yeah an eight pound test for these fish is um, you're dicing with death <laughs> uh, yeah uh, we bumped into a lad on the river the other day and he was fishing he was getting the takes but he could not control the fish and he was down to six pound test uh, yeah, that's a, a little tough. Flies and fish. Yeah, it's a little tough, unfortunately. Six pound, good luck. Yeah. Uh, eight pound, you got a 50-50 chance. Yeah. Maybe 60-40, you know, leaning towards the fish. When the water's a little, little colored, your favorite scotch color, that's when you can get away with 10 pound, and you know, we're a little bit on more even ground with these fish. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've been using 10 pounds, but yeah. streamer fishing, you know, they, they hit it really hard, so you, you want to have it exactly. a minimum of 10, I would say, exactly. when you're exactly. ripping it back. But the eggs, as you say, 8 pounds, you might be able to get away with that. If you're using a trout setup, you know, like a 5 or a 6 weight, and you're just going after some of the, the trout, guys will use all the way down to 4 and 6 pound test. Yeah, just if you hook a steelhead, you're not you're probably trouble. landing yeah. it. Yeah. I did feel uh, there was a couple of occasions, so I've managed to hook 5. Five, uh, but I've only, I've only landed two and I did feel, and I'm fishing a seven weight that I was completely outgunned. You know, yeah. they, they, they yeah. go right into the woods and you've got very little chance of keeping a hold of them at that point. Exactly, yeah. yeah. When I'm fishing indicators for them, um, a nine foot eight weight's kind of your quintessential rod, you know, in the quiver, but also it's pretty standard for a steelhead. Yeah. I like running a 10 foot seven or a 10 foot eight weight. You get a little more extra leverage, a little extra cushion, yeah. cushion. So if you're fishing eight or six pound, you've got a little more shock absorption. Yeah, you know? which makes, yeah, that makes it's sense. It's a world of difference. Yeah. So if uh, people want to come along and uh, hire a guide, how would they go about that, Wesley? Um, so there's a lot of different guide services out there. There's a lot of independent guides. Uh, me, myself, I am not only an independent contractor, but I work here at the uh, Orvis Pier Marquette River Lodge. So you can give us a call um, and someone in the shop will kind of direct you and have you, you know, situated with a certain guide. You can pick your start time, pick your day, and the guide will definitely, you know, lead you into the right day and let you know whether you should come on a Tuesday when it's rainy or whether it's a Thursday and it's sunny. Yeah, and manage your expectations, of course. <sighs> that right. is honestly one of the biggest things. Uh, if you can expect to come here, have a good time, enjoy yourself and learn something and get home safe, the fish come secondary and they tend to come a little more when you're not trying as hard to catch them. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> I've, I've certainly, we've not, I've not had a lot of fish this week, but I've really enjoyed the beauty of the river and it's, uh, exactly. it's been a fantastic trip. Wes, thanks very much for uh, talking to me. Hey, thank and, you, Lindsay, uh, very much. Uh, we're flying home tomorrow and uh, I, I hope you'll see the video when it comes out. I hope, I'm looking forward to it. Thanks very much. You're very welcome. So we've reached the end of our trip here to Baldwin, Michigan and the River Pear Marquette. It's been an absolute pleasure to fish here. One of my friends that accompanied me along the trip, he said when the video's done, what people will see is lots of fish being caught and they won't see the downside to coming all this way and fishing for these fish. And I said, that's not the case. I always try and be completely honest in my videos where I can be. Now, it's a long way, it took us 24 hours to get here. When we get back to the other side, back into London, Dell and Graham have to travel all the way back to Scotland and Carlisle, respectively. So it's a long old trip, it's a costly trip. The flights aren't cheap and it does uh, cost quite a bit of money. I lost one of my best friends last year, just a little over a year now, and it has made me think that you don't know how long you've got on this planet and you really do have to make the best of the time you have and I want to visit places like this and catch fish like these steelhead. Now 
As regards to all the fish you've seen being caught, the bulk of them were caught by Fergie and Dell, who are exceptional anglers. Ian and I have struggled a little. Uh, I've managed to get a hold of five steelhead, and having spoken with some of the guides, they reckon that's quite exceptional for this week. So we have come in actual prime time steelhead week, but unfortunately, the run's a little late this year due to various temperature fluctuations in the, in the environment and it slowed things up considerably. In fact, the first couple of days here, I didn't think there was a steelhead in the river, but um, Graham and Dell proved me wrong by catching one. But the takes were few and far between and the fish were very precious. So as the week's gone on, the fishing's only got better and now that we're leaving tomorrow, it's probably going to be an exceptional week of steelhead fishing. But that's the gamble you take. You come when you think it's going to be good and you've got to go from there. There's an old saying, it's called fishing, not catching. Sometimes you can go and have a whale of a time catching lots of fish, but it's not always about the fish. I know you hear this lots of times, but for my mind, it's the company you're in and the places you're visiting. The fish are simply a bonus. Now, none of us have ever fished for steelhead and uh, we were going off what we've gleaned from YouTube and the internet and going from there really. So it was a fairly steep learning curve, but having excellent anglers like Fergie and Dell along, it wasn't long before we drilled down to a way of catching these fish. And the, the obvious thing was to scale everything down. That was from tippet down to fly size. Now, scaling down your tippet's very dangerous. And we did bump into a local chap who'd scaled down to six pound. Uh, and he was, he was catching fish, sure enough, but I didn't see him land the one. So he was getting snapped up all the time leaving flies in fish, which I don't think is good practice. If you want to have any kind of real chance of landing one of these fish, I think the bare minimum tip that you're looking at is eight pounds, and even then, I never went to that. I stuck it around 10 pounds, and uh, that gave me some chance. Having hooked five fish, uh, I only managed to land two steelhead. There was lots of browns and what they call baby steelhead in the river, but, uh, they were great fun nonetheless, and just fishing different styles. So I'm not used to swinging uh, a heavy weight with a lure off the end and then off the back of the lure, maybe two foot, I would have a very small egg, and that accounted for some fish as well. We've caught amazing looking fish. Uh, unfortunately, and I'll never hear the end of it, the best looking fish of the trip for my money was a fish Dell caught, and it was a cockfish but the colours were absolutely fantastic. And I thought yeah, I was getting it with the GoPro, but I got my lighting all wrong and he ended up not getting a very good picture of the fish. And he was very clear in pointing that out to me. But you know, I'm sure it'll live on in his memory. Highlights of the trip then, waking up uh, in the morning and coming out of the lodge to see four or five inches of snow on the ground. It was absolutely spectacular. We don't really get a lot of snowfall in Southern England anymore. So seeing snow on the ground was great. And actually going fishing in those conditions, although it was cold, it was very enjoyable. The scenery was stunning. When you come on trips like this, you've got to manage your expectations. You can't expect to come away because somebody said to you, oh, it's prime time and there's going to be huge runs of steelhead. It's not often the case that that's correct. So we've had this weather fluctuations here in Michigan and the steelhead runs slightly late. I think it's going to be fantastic fishing this coming week and not the week that we've just had. But despite that, we've still managed to catch a fair few number of steelhead and some quite remarkable brown trout. The colorations on them are absolutely stunning. Now, options. If, if the river's not fishing, there are other options around, but we did spend some time driving out to White River only to find the banks lined with anglers that were using spinning rods with flies under a bubble float and uh, there was no space for us. So it wasn't really an option. We got back in the car, we came back to the Pear Market and, and we had a much nicer time to be perfectly honest. There's another place called Tippy Dam that Fish we didn't on. quite get up to. And I've got a feeling that we should have made the effort to get up there and, and have a look at just a different water. We kind of, as we were working through how to best catch the steelhead, 
we, we kind of got wrapped up in that and what we were doing was we were starting early in the morning, we'd have breakfast, we would get down to the river and we were towards the end of the week, one. we were fishing till 12, 30, 1 o'clock, we were stopping till half past three, so having a long lunch and then we were back down the river until it was dark. The most activity we saw was that sort of twilight time between five o'clock in the evening to around 7.30, 8 o'clock at night. And that's when we were getting most of our actions and we enjoyed some fantastic sport. For those of you that have fished for steelhead on light gear or fly gear, you'll know these fish are incredibly powerful. And last night, one of the highlights for me, we'd been fishing over a run of steelhead. They were coming up over the gravel, going into deeper holes. And Ian had sat on them for a long time. Yes! Then Fergie'd had a go and I think Dell had had a go and I'd come in and I'd put egg flies over them and various other things but in the end I put a streamer, some concoction that I'd just come up with at the vice and a fish took and it absolutely roared up the river taking all my line and then my reel failed me and it stalled and what happened was the fish just snapped me clean off, they're so powerful, it's so exciting and if if you want to give it a go, I would thoroughly recommend that you do.